Hey, I'm Brandon Graisley. I'm a high school math teacher. We are solving equations, and we're going to look at the ones that are of this form. We have uh, a variable term, which has some coefficient on one side of the equation, and on the other side we have just a number. Now, what this means here is for times x, we don't usually use a multiplication symbol. Sometimes we use a dot to show multiplication, but usually we just have that as a coefficient. This means 4 times x, though. 4 times this unknown value is 20. And just like with addition and subtraction, we can perform the inverse operation to find out what this value of x must be. The inverse operation in this case is division. And so we will divide both sides, the entire, each entire side of the equation, by 4. And so 4 times x and then divided by 4 will be the same as just x. And some people like to do something like this. They'll, they'll call this canceling or dividing out the 4s. Divide the top by 4 and divide the bottom by 4, by four and you'll be left with just 1. Um, <clears throat> so because we've d made this happen on purpose, 4 times x and then divided by the same number, we know we're going to end up with just x. That's on purpose. And over here, 20 divided by 4 is 5. We know what the value of x is that makes our original equation true. 4 times 5 equals 20. Let's try another one. Here's negative 10 times x equals 70. Once again, we are multiplying x by negative 10. Include this negative here. And so if I perform the inverse operation, that'll be dividing by negative 10. And I'll have to do that to both sides of the equation to balance this in order for this to be true still. And so negative 10 times x divided by negative 10 is going to be just x. Over here, 70 divided by negative 10 is negative 7. They don't always all work out this nicely, though. How about this one? 8 times x equals negative uh, 30. Well, once again, multiplication, let's do the opposite. We divide both sides by 8. Here I'll have x on this side when I simplify. On this side, 30 divided by x, well, that's not a whole number. That's going to give us a fraction or a decimal, if you like. Uh, I'm going to leave this as a fraction. Instead of, of thinking about this as division, though, this is a fraction here, 30 over 8. And I will just simplify this. I can divide the top and bottom by 2, and I'll be left with... 15 over 4, and it's still negative. Now, if you wanted to, you could also write that as a decimal value, uh, which is going to be, uh, let's see, 3 and 3 quarters, so 3.75, and it's still a negative value. Okay, so all of these, uh, they all have the same situation. A number times x equals another number, and you can just divide by that number. What if that number out front, though, uh, were a decimal or a fraction? Well, decimal is going to work in the same way. And let's do the fraction, though, because it's a little bit more interesting. What if 2 thirds of x, 2 thirds times x, equals, uh, let's say, uh, 7 fifths? That's fairly gross looking, right? Well, I can divide, once again, divide both sides by this coefficient, this 2 thirds here. I'm going to do it that way first. There's another way to do this. I'm going to divide by 2 thirds this whole side of the equation, and I'm going to divide this side by 2 thirds as well. But when we do division of a fraction, um, to make this practical, we usually do multiplication of the reciprocal. Let me just write that out. 2 thirds of x, instead of dividing by 2 thirds, we will multiply often by 3 halves. And you know what? I'm actually going to use brackets because I don't like multiplication symbols in here. So I'm going to take 2 thirds of x, and then I'm going to multiply it by 3 halves. Over here, same thing. 7 fifths times 3 halves. So if you think of it, I'm just going to underline here a little bit, I've multiplied both sides by 3 halves. That's the same as dividing by 2 thirds. And when I um, do this multiplication here on this side, the coefficient part, the number part, 2 times 3 is 6, 3 times 2 is 6, that'll be 6 over 6. Maybe I'll just write that out. That's 6 over 6 times x, which is the same as 1x. And over here, I have, let's see, 7 times 3 is 21, 5 times 2 is 10. So again, rewriting this, that's the same as x equals 21 over 10, or you could call that 2.1 if you like. So here we divided by this same number that was out front, just like we did here when the number was a whole number, 8, we divided by 8. Here we divided by the fraction, but instead we ended up 
down here, just multiplying by the reciprocal. And that's the same thing. That'll give us the same effect. So if you have any fraction, like uh, 4 over 19 times x equals 5, let's say, then you can, instead of dividing, which is one way to think of the inverse operation, you can multiply by the reciprocal. So I'll multiply by 19 over 4 on both sides of my equation. And that's, these will all cancel each other out, and I'll be left with just x on this side. It's the same as multi, uh, multiplying by the fraction, uh, sorry, multiplying by this reciprocal of this is the same as dividing by this number. And uh, 5 times 19 is 95 quarters. Okay, I hope that helps. Thanks.